let's look at some updated results from LHCb. Previously, the LHCb experiment at CERN reported interesting results in two quantities. These quantities are called Rk and Rk star. The measured values of these quantities came out below the standard model prediction. Rk was 3.1 sigma below the SM prediction, and the Rk star measurements were between 2.1 and 2.5 sigma low. These deviations from the standard model prediction are small, and they are nowhere near what would normally be required by particle physicists to declare discovery of new physics. So then, why were they interesting? These measurements were among a cluster of measurements of different quantities showing small deviations from the predictions of the standard model. And this cluster of measurements had a theme. They hinted at possible violations of something called lepton universality. So what's lepton universality? In the standard model, the charged leptons, which are the electron, the muon, and the tau, are identical except for their masses but it's possible that there is physics beyond the standard model which differentiates between these three particles. LHCb's Rk and Rk star measurements hinted that the electron and muon might have differences that we don't know about. For a review of these results relevant to possible violations of lepton universality, you can check out the video All Those Flavor Anomalies available on this channel. Okay, so the LHCb collaboration has recently updated its results. And, spoiler, their new results agree with the predictions of the standard model. So if you're looking for new physics in Rk and Rk star, this is, alas, a bit disheartening, but that's how the cookie crumbles. Here we'll look at their updated result and discuss what happened to cause the change. We'll briefly review RK and RK star, but for more detail, check out the video New Physics in LHCb Data. If you want to take a look at the old papers, here are the references. And the new references are given here and in the description below. Okay, let's very briefly review what Rk and Rk star are. So Rk and Rk star look at specific decays of B mesons. They compare how often these decays contain muons to how often they contain electrons. We'll start with Rk. Rk examines decays of charged B plus mesons to a charged kaon, called a K plus, and a lepton anti lepton pair, so either an electron positron pair, denoted E plus E minus, or a muon anti muon pair, denoted mu plus mu minus. So here we show those two possible decays. In each case, the B plus decays to a K plus and a pair of leptons, which can be E plus E minus or mu plus mu minus. In the standard model, the same physics leads to these two processes, which is an example of lepton universality. So in the standard model, these two decays should happen at the same rate except for small effects coming from the difference of the electron and muon masses. To look for evidence of lepton universality violation, we can look at the ratio of two branching fractions. A branching fraction is just the fraction of the time that a particle decays in that particular way. 
So in the numerator, we have the branching fraction for a b plus to go to k plus mu plus mu minus. And in the denominator, we have the branching fraction of the same b plus meson to k plus e plus e minus. In the standard model, this ratio is very close to 1. And if there were no experimental uncertainties, this ratio would be rk. But experiments aren't perfect and muons and electrons are detected using different methods. This leads to an inconvenient issue. Imperfections in detecting an E plus E minus pair are not the same as the imperfections in detecting a mu plus mu minus pair. So what happens if you're better at detecting and identifying E plus E minus than at detecting and identifying mu plus mu minus? or vice versa. This can screw up the measurement of this ratio of branching fractions that we just wrote down. So there needs to be a way to take this into account. Let's see how LHCB does this. So a B plus meson can also decay to a K plus and a lepton antilepton pair through a particle called the J psi meson. Except for the lepton pair mass, this looks exactly like the process you're interested in. In other words, if the decay proceeds through a J psi, the mass of the lepton antilepton pair will cluster close to the mass of the J psi. Otherwise, it won't. But in other respects, the two decays look the same. Now, the J psi has been heavily studied. We know that it decays to E plus E minus and mu plus mu minus at essentially equal rates. This equality of branching fractions is known to better than 1%. In principle, we could measure the ratio of the branching fractions of a B plus going to a K plus and a lepton antilepton pair through a J psi particle. We know from the observations of a J psi that this ratio must be very close to 1. But if your experiment detects E plus E minus pairs at a different rate than mu plus mu minus pairs, it should get this ratio wrong. But it should get it wrong in the same way as it will get the ratio we actually want wrong. In other words, if you are better at identifying muons than electrons, it should throw off both of these ratios in the same way. So here's the definition of RK actually used by LHCB. They take a double ratio. If experiments were perfect, the ratio on the bottom would be essentially 1 but experiments aren't perfect, and the ratio on the bottom helps eliminate systematic errors that would occur if they instead just used the ratio in the numerator as their definition of RK. Okay, so that was RK. RK star is similar, but it looks at decays of neutral B naught mesons into neutral K star 892 mesons and a lepton-antilepton pair. Okay, now let's compare the old and new results. Here are the old results. There is one result for RK, and there are two results for RK star. The first uncertainty quoted on each result is the statistical uncertainty, and the second is the systematic uncertainty. In the standard model, the second of these three quantities, denoted RK star low mass, has a predicted value of about 0.92. The standard model prediction for the other two quantities is essentially 1. We can see that all three measurements were low, with significances ranging from 2.1 to 3.1 sigma. And here are the new results. There are four. The standard model predictions are all very close to 1, 
and all four measurements are in good agreement with the standard model. Okay, so what changed? First, let's look at the small changes. As we noted in the old results, there was one result for RK, and now there are two. So before we just had this result, and now we have these two results. Okay, so why is that? The new result uses two sets of data, depending on the mass of the lepton-antilepton pair. One result looks at low masses between about 0.3 and 1.05 GeV. The other uses a higher mass range between 1.05 and 2.45 GeV. In the old result, they only considered the latter mass range. So one result from LHCb is completely new. Okay, next, on RK star, the lepton-antilepton mass range has changed on one of the results. So we're comparing this result in the old papers to this result in the new papers. Why does this matter? Well, in the old results, they looked at masses of the lepton-antilepton pair that went down to about 0.21 GeV. In the new result, they only went down to about 0.3 GeV. This makes the analysis a bit cleaner. But it also changes the standard model expectation for this result. Because muons are much heavier than electrons, it is very hard to make muon pairs with very low invariant mass. So if you go down to very low values, even in the standard model, you will get substantially more electrons than muons. So it's not just the experimental result that changes, the standard model prediction changes from 0.92 for the old measurement of RK star to 0.98 for the new one. Okay, next the new analysis of RK star uses much more data than the previous analysis did. Basically now they're looking at about five times as many B decays as they did before. This will change the results somewhat due to statistical errors. On the other hand there was no change in the data set for RK. And for the last small change that we're going to look at, they now determine RK and RK star through a single unified analysis. Before, they were done separately. But it turns out that one of the processes we're interested in, where a neutral B decays to a K star and an E plus E minus pair, can be a background to another process that we're interested in, where the charged B decays to a K plus and an E plus E minus pair. So it's a good idea to have the two results emerge from the same analysis. Okay, with that, let's talk about the one big change. LHCb re-examined their background processes. So let's remind ourselves what background is. This is a set of processes that are not what you want to study, but which, unfortunately, can be mistaken for the process you want to study. If you don't adequately understand these processes, they can throw off your result. The backgrounds for the decays involving muons were well understood, but the backgrounds to the decays containing electrons had an issue. Okay, so the B plus and B naught mesons can decay in other ways than what we've been interested in here. I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of jargon. A decay mode is a way in which a particle can decay, so basically a set of particles that it decays to. In the case of these B mesons, there are decay modes that include a K plus or K star, like what we're interested in, plus other particles. 
On rare occasions, these other particles can be mistaken for E plus E minus. So let's look back again at how LHCb obtains RK. Here's their formula. If you mistake other particles for E plus E minus, you can think that a B plus is decaying to modes containing E plus E minus when it's not. So you can get a value for this branching fraction that is erroneously too big. And if you get a value for that branching fraction that is too big, you can get a value for RK that is too small. LHCb looked at these possibly problematic decay modes and found that each one alone would contribute negligibly to their results. But there are a lot of these modes and taken in aggregate they needed to be included in the analysis. They addressed this in two ways. First, they studied these decay modes in their data where the particles were not identified as E plus E minus. And then they calculated how often misidentifications would occur. Second, they tightened the criteria for identifying electrons so that misidentifications of particles would occur less often. Treating these backgrounds correctly is largely responsible for the change in the reported value of RK. Okay, and with that, let's briefly summarize. The LHCb collaboration recently released an update to their measurements of RK and RK star. Their new results agree well with the standard model predictions and time will tell how this fits in with the other interesting observables that hint at violations of lepton universality.